is the real estate market up or down in the greater Tampa Bay area? In today's video, I'm sharing with you the June 2023 real estate market update. And it's been quite a few months since I've shared a market update with you. But today's video is going to take a really close look at all of the insights, trends and market data and information to give you a really close insider look on exactly what's going on in our market so that you can make a really well informed decision whether you're looking to buy or sell a home here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now, I know the real estate market is always in the headlines and everything seems to be doom and gloom but i want to share an inside look so that you know exactly what is going on in the real estate market from somebody who is working with buyers and sellers on a day-to-day -day basis so let's go over what we have seen over the last couple of years so of course the real estate market saw a huge appreciation in purchase price it was crazy during the last two to three years and as we all know it was definitely not a normal real estate market well, back in June of last year, with the increase in the interest rates, that put a huge pump on the brakes here in the real estate market. Now, while we didn't really see the effects of that from day to night, over the last several months and even the last year, we have definitely seen a correction and a shift in the real estate market. So if we're only looking at the months of active inventory, we're technically considered a seller's market. We have less than six months of active inventory, but I struggle a little bit with saying that it's actually a seller's market because it is definitely not the same type of seller's market that we saw back in the 2020, 2021, and even parts of 2022 seller's market. It's totally different, but it's also not a buyer's market either. We don't have a surplus of inventory. We don't have more homes on the market than we do active buyers. So I feel like it's not really a seller's market or a buyer's market. I think it just depends on the specific situation on a particular neighborhood area, whether you're looking to purchase a resale home or you're looking you're looking in the new construction sector. Okay, so let's start off with Hillsborough County. So for months supply of inventory, May 2023 had 1.7 months of active inventory compared to one month of active inventory back in May 2022. Now, remember the interest rate increase was in June of 2022. So I want to take a look at the inventory even a couple of months later. So, um, the inventory in May was 1.7, but fast forward to August 2022, the inventory went up to 2.1 months of active inventory. And then it saw the highest increase in November 2022 at 2.4 months of active inventory. So we're actually now um, down considerably even compared to summer of last year. For the average sales prices in Hillsborough County, we are actually down in sales price. May 2023 ended with an average sales price of $531,000 versus $544,000 back in May 2022. The average sales prices, interestingly enough, peaked in June 2022 at $556,000. But remember, the increase in the interest rates didn't produce a change from day to night. So we actually saw the effects of those interest rates back in November of 2022 with the average sales price at $487,000. Now, I feel like buyers are now accepting and realizing that the higher interest rates are part of our more normal market today. And then we're seeing the effects of that because the sales prices dropped to the lowest they had been in 2022 but then it's picked back up and last month was the highest month we've seen may 2023 being at 531 thousand dollars when we're looking at close price to list price it's down compared to this time last year in may we ended the month with 98.4 percent close price to list price compared to 101 percent so we're seeing um purchase prices slightly lower than the list price. And for median days to contract, May 2023 ended with 19 days from the time a listing goes on the market to the time you actually get an executed contract, 19 days versus six days. And 
February 2023, we saw the highest numbers at 39 days. So we're down now considerably compared to February of this year. This tells me that the buyer demand has picked back up and there's a lot more activity in the market compared to early winter of this year. Before we go on to the Pasco County stats, I just want to remind you that all of my contact information is on the screen. You can always feel free to reach out to me. I get calls, texts, and emails from buyers and sellers just like you wanting personalized advice and assistance for all of their real estate needs. I'm here to help you. All right, so for Pasco County, let's talk about active inventory. So we have more inventory, which is really great news for buyers. We're up last month at 1.6 months of active inventory compared to 0.9 months of active inventory May of last year. That's crazy. There were there was less than one month of active inventory. In August, we saw 1.9 months. And then in November of last year, we saw the highest numbers at 2.3 months of active inventory. Now let's talk about average sales price. So May, 2023 ended with $425,000 as the average sales price compared to May of last year at $427,000. Interestingly enough, the average sales price also peaked in this county in June, 2022 at $439,000. And again, the interest rates, we saw the decrease in pricing. And in January of this year, we saw the lowest um, numbers that we had seen in quite a while at $394,000. But it's back up again, and it's the highest it's been currently since June of last year. Close price to list price is 97.7% compared to 100%. And the median days to contract was 18 days versus six days this time last year. And in February of this year, we saw the highest numbers we had seen in quite a while. It was 40 days, median days to contract. So let's spotlight a couple of cities. First, let's start off with the city of Tampa. So Tampa saw more placid changes over the last year or so. So the average sales price May 2023 was 631,000 compared to 687,000 um, compared to last year. So about a $50,000 difference. But the market again peaked June 2022 at $700,000. The month supply of inventory is currently right around 1.9 months versus 1.2 months this time last year. So for Wesley Chapel, the highest average sales price we had seen in the past three years and even beyond that was $559,000 in April 2023. So interestingly, Wesley Chapel has seen very stark up and down average sales prices over the last several months and even year. But an interesting observation is that while one month average sales prices increase and then the next month they taper down significantly, the next month it goes up. But Overall, it's still an upward trajectory in average sales prices. And in Wesley Chapel, month supply of inventory has increased from 0.9 this time last year to 1.4, which is a really great indicator. Hopefully with more inventory coming onto the market, it'll normalize the market a little bit more. Now let's talk about new construction. New construction is its own separate ball game. But when we're looking at analytics, data, and information, it can actually be really challenging to know exactly what the data is showing and indicating when you want to quant quantify the information because a lot of builders don't actually list their homes on MLS. So all of this market data and information is provided to us real estate agents through our association and the Greater Tampa Association of Realtors and through the MLS data and information. So when builders aren't listing their homes on MLS, it's a whole segment of the real estate market that is actually missing because we don't have that solid data to go off of when it comes to the new construction market. Now, there are some really interesting trends and things that I've been observing as somebody who specializes in the new construction sector and that works primarily with buyers in the new construction market. We are still seeing consistent demand in the new construction sector here in the greater Tampa Bay area. And personally for me, I have seen that demand actually come from out of state buyers who are looking to retire here or who are just looking for a completely different 
change and pace of life and they're looking for new construction options when it comes to purchasing a home. One of the main differences that we see in today's market compared to what we were seeing in the height of the pandemic is that now you can actually purchase a home before the builder has started construction on the home. It was very common in 2020 to purchase a home when you already had a roof installed on the home and there really wasn't any flexibility for the buyer in terms of picking their paint colors and their color schemes. One very common trend that we are seeing in today's market is because of COVID and so many of the supply chain issues that builders had to deal with, many of the ones that were semi-custom builders and really allowed you all of the options galore to do X, Y, and Z structural changes on your home and um, you know have a million and one different paint color options and quartz countertop options really narrowed down all the options, number one, to probably kind of just wrangle all of the suppliers together and just kind of keep everything organized. And two, to be able to meet the demand and the timeline that they had anticipated for the completion of these homes. And one of the things that I have observed with many buyers who are buying their second, third, and fourth home now post COVID, who had experience purchasing a home prior to COVID, you can kind of see the disappointment that they come to have when they realize that the new construction market is not the same way it was back when they purchase a home pre 2019 now disappointed to realize that even these builders who were once known as semi custom builders really aren't doing that many customizations. And of course the um, price of everything has increased. So if they were used to paying an, a specific amount for let's say an outdoor pit kitchen or even purchasing a swimming pool through the builder, those really aren't options today with, the main production builders in our area. So unfortunately, for the most part, obviously there may be some exceptions. Many of these semi-custom builders have kind of pivoted from the semi-custom home option and turned more to a quick move-in or an inventory style home. So specifically for new construction, I have seen consistent price increases week over week for almost all of the communities and builders in our area. Of course, there are exceptions, but this is something really important to keep in mind that if you're looking to buy a new construction home, don't wait. Get your affairs in order, get your pre-approval uh, lined up and ready if you're going to be using financing to purchase your home. Start sooner rather than you think you would need to because um, it would be really unfortunate to fall in love with a home to then later determine that uh, the affordability changes because of the huge increases in pricing week over week. Of course, the increasing in price is not what we were seeing in the height of the earlier market, but it's still significant to note that those increases do affect affordability now when you combine that with higher interest rates than what we were seeing earlier on in the market. On a really positive note, over the greater Pasco County area, there are so many new construction communities in the works that are already announced and being built. And these are master plan communities and projects that span at least the next three to five years as they're slowly rolling out phases within within these communities. So that's really great news to help bring more inventory into the market. Now I know new construction is not everyone's cup of tea, but it does help in terms of bringing more inventory into the market. And lastly, for new construction, something really interesting that I've noted is that we've seen greater incentives for buyers if you're going the new construction route and you're you're using the builder's preferred lender i've even seen some incentives as high as forty thousand dollars that you can use towards closing costs buying down your interest rates um, design center incentives and hey i've even heard of builders paying the entire cdd bond for the buyer so you don't have any cdd payments attached to your property taxes so there are so many incentives that builders are providing so overall for buyers in today's market it's a far more conducive market for buyers you have a little bit more leeway in negotiating repairs and negotiating the sales price but it's still a market that can be competitive because of the lack of inventory. If you have a really great neighborhood, a really great home and a really great um, you know, price range, it's not uncommon to see a multiple offer situation. 
but this market is far more conducive for a buyer than it was even two years ago. And then for sellers, pricing is still important and pricing has to be spot on. The main difference in today's market is that buyers are far more picky when it comes to the condition of your home. Buyers aren't really gonna be as flexible when it comes to repairs and they're a lot more ruthless in requesting not just four point inspection related repairs, but I've also seen other cosmetic safety items and items that you wouldn't have seen typically in a, a prior market. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. If you have any questions about the real estate market or a specific neighborhood or, or area or even new construction, all my contact information is on the screen. I love helping buyers and sellers just like you. That's all for today's video. I'll catch you in the next one.